Hi there, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me yet, my name is Ansa and I like to make soap with unconventional ingredients sometimes. Today is no exception. We're going to do kombucha. Now kombucha is awesome for your gut health, but except for that, it is a wonderful ingredient in soap making as well, especially if you live in hot water areas like I do. So just keep watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. And um, then you will be updated for any new information and new weird and wonderful soaps that I'm going to think of. So for this video, I'm going to show you the recipe formulation in a light calculator. I'm going to show you how to make it, the demonstration, and then the cut as well. So keep watching and let me show you how to do this. Okay, just to quickly show you how I've done it on soapmakingfriend.com in the light calculator. I opened my recipe. If you don't know how to use this calculator, just click on the link above there. I will link it there for you. Um, I've got a demonstration on how to use this calculator. I'm going to add my name and then I'm just going to click it and save it there. I decided it's going to be a solid soap, so you're just going to choose solid soap. Then I'm going to work in percentages, so I'm going to choose certain percent percentages for every um, oil that I'm using. I said yes to recalculate my mold size because I've got a mold that is 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters by 7,225. Now the, I usually pour up to the height of 7. For some reason the calculator already put in 0,225. I just tend to leave it there then I've now I've got a little bit of extra soap. Um, I'm not going to under pour, I've got enough there to use. Then the amount of liquid in this recipe. I'm going to use a full water replacement. I'm going to replace all of my water with kombucha. So, but I'm going to use a 2 to 1 liquid and to lie ratio. If you just start out, you can do half water, half kombucha, um, depending on what you like. And then the super fat, I'm going to leave at zero. The reason why I'm going to leave this at zero is because of the acidity in my kombucha. I know the acid in there is going to neutralize some of my sodium hydroxide. So there's going to be less sodium hydroxide to saponify my oils and I know it's going to leave a super fat. I'm going to show you how to calculate or explain how to calculate it, but my super fat is going to end up around about 7% super fat um, because of the acidity of the acid in my kombucha there. So um, you can do it the other way around as well. You can make it a 5% or a 6% super fat and then you can calculate how much sodium hydroxide you need to add extra to counteract the amount that's going to be neutralized there. But anyhow, so what I've decided here, yeah, I took um, used 10% castor oil, 22% coconut oil, I've added olive oil, shea butter and tallow. So if you look at my graph, everything is nice and it's balanced in here, so I'm quite happy with my recipe here. So then you're going to have a look at the amount of liquid required. So I'm going to use 146 grams of um, kombucha in my recipe. The original sodium hydroxide weight is 73,29. So this is going to depend if you want to um, leave your super fat here at zero. And then you can calculate how much, um, you're not going to calculate, you're just going to let it be and let the uh, acidity neutralize some of your lye and cause a super fat. Or you can add the 5% day and you can add your extra lye on top of that. So I'm not going to add anything else to my recipe except for fragrance oil, which I calculated at 3%. Yeah, um, and then to show you here, a full water replacement of kombucha, what I've done is I've frozen it. Um, because of the sugars in the kombucha, it can heat up quite a lot. So to freeze your kombucha beforehand is just going to help you to keep the temperatures in check there. Then just for example, 28 grams of a 5% vinegar will neutralize one gram of sodium hydroxide. So if you buy a commercial vinegar and you use that or um, for example, apple cider vinegar, it's usually around about 5%. So 28 grams of that is going to neutralize one gram. So what you're going to do is the 240 grams of liquid for this recipe. You divide it by 28 grams that you're going to get there. That is going to give you 7,6 gram of lye that's being neutralized. So if you want to put your super fat as a 5% in there, 
you need to add 7,6 gram of lye on top of the lye already calculated here. If you leave your super fat in this recipe of zero, the 0% zero super fat will result in plus minus 7% super fat after the neutralization here. So I'm just going to leave it like that. What you can do afterwards, I'm going to save it. And it's already saved there. I wasn't logged in. I just want to quickly show you if you go to the top of this and you go to recipes and you go to recipe database, you're just going to click on it. You're going to go left to recipe details and you can add saponify in there. Just type it in there, go down to the bottom of the page, say search recipes, and you will find all the videos that I've made for Saponify. For this channel, you're gonna find it here. So there is the kombucha one, there is a beginner recipe that I've made for, for the channel, the wood soap recipe. If you go to the next page, there we go. You're gonna find the leaf imprint soap as well, um, the milk soap. So all my recipes are here you're welcome to use it you're just going to click on top of the recipe and you can open it click on copy and when you open copy you can adjust it according to what you need if you just need to oh now it jumped if you just need to change your dimensions for your mold you can just add your dimensions in here so now right over to the demonstration on how to make this up I've got everything ready according to what we calculated in the soap calculator and uh, for how we formulated the recipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put on my glasses, got my gloves. Now I already pre-measured everything here because you know, I took you through the whole recipe. I didn't feel the need to show everything on camera again. So I've got all my oils here. Now what is different from this into what I usually do. Usually I do a heat transfer method. The heat transfer method, um, we add our light to our water and then the warm light solution is being added to the oils then and because of the heat it melts all the oils. Now what happens here is um, because we froze our kombucha, uh, the temperature is not going to rise enough here to melt our oils and butters in this one as well. You can measure your oils, but you don't really need to. Um, it's 46 degrees Celsius at the moment here. So I just make sure that everything is clear. If it's still milky, I know it's not warm enough. So 46 is um, high enough so that the stearic acid won't make stearic acid spots in my oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my acoustic soda and I'm going to add it a little bit at a time to our frozen kombucha here. So this is going to take a while to melt it down on, or to dissolve in here. So I'm going to have to use a little bit of patience to get these guys incorporated. The kombucha is quite cold. It's minus 6 degrees Celsius here. Just going to add it a little bit by bit. You can cover up the rest so it's not going to make fumes. Now this is one way that you can make soap as well without having all those fumes in your um, airways is when you are using even if you're using water you can use ice as well because of the low temperature it doesn't create all of those fumes. I think the fumes are actually part of when it makes steam that you inhale that. So that's terrible to get it in your lungs. That's why you use a mask if you, especially if you've got asthma or something like that. If you've got a lung disease or a disorder or anything, make sure that you use proper protection to protect your lungs. Normally it's just for a very short while that this actually gave it all fumes, but yeah. So let's just add a little bit more here. This will speed up 
when it starts to get warmer I can see there's some liquid forming there in the bottom already now kombucha if you don't know kombucha um, kombucha is you start with a scoby you don't really need to start you can start with kombucha tea as well but it forms a silicon like layer on top of the tea that is called the scoby now it's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast so it actually feeds off the tea and sugars in the tea and then it creates um, probiotics or the probiotics grow in it so it's awesome for gut health if you have got any gut issues you can start with a little bit kombucha every day and just increase your dosage well dosage it sounds like medicine but it's actually a bit like medicine but don't start with a cup immediately you might get the runnings because your tummy is not used to it now as it eats up the sugar um, it will create the um, cultures and it's turning a little bit acidic as well now this is why it's so awesome for soap making because of the acid um, the acid reacts with your lye solution or your sodium hydroxide now if you are using citric acid if you don't have kombucha you can use citric acid as well now, citric acid um, forms sodium sodium citrate when it reacts with the sodium hydroxide and it is a gelator so it actually binds to heavy metals and um, the minerals and stuff in your water so it actually makes your soap work better so it reduces the soap scum now the same thing happens with vinegar and kombucha actually if you um, culture it long enough it does create a vinegar in here now if you are using for example um, apple cider vinegar normally it's around about five percent acidic so that is how we calculated our um, recipe here on a 5% acidity now mine I actually called it quite a while so I presume mine might be a little bit more acidic than that the result will be a higher um, super fat in my um, soap so it's not really a big issue for me um, super fat is nice to have and as it binds to the hot uh, as it softens my hot water we can actually maybe say it like that um, the super fat is actually just going to be nice because the soap is going to work better but nature actually just blessed us with so many good things you can drink and eat I think with all the commercial stuff that we are used to buy and so on we actually lose out on a lot of nice stuff so if you don't know kombucha google it see if you can find the culture somewhere close by um, mine I've got it for many years now I think my kombucha plant or culture is at least I think it's about six years old already I've got it for quite a while I'm just going to add this and fast forward the video a little bit but I've got extra here is my fragrance oil is already measured I've got a little sieve here just to make sure that if I pour it into my oils all the lye is dissolved because it's turning dark it's going to be hard to see if the, the lye is dissolved all the way so it's just an extra precaution that I'm taking Okay, now from the top it seems like all the ice is melted, it's 15 degrees Celsius, it's going to go to 16. I can still hear and feel some of the light crystals in the bottom, so I know everything is not dissolved yet. So if you can see in the bottom, there's still some light crystals there at the bottom left there. And um, another way that you can actually test it is if you have a thermometer, you can measure the temperature. As long as it's still dissolving the temperature is going to rise so now it's 20,2 20,4 20,6 20, 
So while there are still light crystals down there, the temperature will increase until all of it is dissolved. Then the temperature will settle out and then it's going to go down again. Oh, depending on your room temperature. Right, we are 24,9. and there's no fumes coming off this it's actually very really easy to breathe around it it's not like when you add um, acoustic soda to water at room temperature um, there's no steam here now the reason why we froze the um, kombucha is because of the sugars in it now the longer you um, culture kombucha the less sugar is available and the more acidic it is now this one I don't think there's a lot of sugar left because I, I actually cultured it quite a while um, the acidity I think was quite high so you can actually do a pH test this is an intermediate recipe I would say because um, you need to know what's going on with the pH and everything and so on so yeah I like to play around with stuff now this one is part of nature okay 34.2 just gonna remember 34 um, in nature things are a little bit unpredictable so this batch of kombucha might have less sugar and more acidity to it than the next batch so I'm gonna play around with it um, if you want to work with something that is steady, rather buy a commercial apple cider vinegar or use normal vinegar, you can also use citric acid as well if you want to use it for hot water. Um, I don't mind having a little bit more super fat or a little bit less super fat in my cell because it's just for personal use. Six, so there's still something dissolving there. Thirty-five point nine. It seems like it's maybe now all melted or dissolved. I can't hear anything if I stir my well here or my light solution. Boiling me. Well yet. seems like it's steady there. Eh? 36.4 okay so what I'm gonna do I don't want it to cool down too much I need my I've got stearic acid rich oils in here so if it's too cold it, I can end up with stearic acid spots here so I'm just going to add it to my oil but I'm going to use my little sieve just to make double sure there's no light crystals that's going to end up in my soap here. Oh, seems like every last little piece was dissolved. Although there's a tiny little thing just clinging to the side there. So yeah rather just strain your stuff then you know everything is safe Stippling it a little bit. Just make 
sure you burp your stick blender properly. Because it's got a high INA, INS, it should trace actually quite fast. If you pull out your stick blender out of your um, oil and it separates, there I can see it's like the oil and the water is still separating a little bit, then you can just stick blend it a bit more. Okay, it's already to a thin tray, so I knew it's going to trace quite fast. lovely butterscotch soap battery so I'm just gonna add my fragrance oil last it's a new one I'm not sure if it's gonna accelerate this stuff so let's cross fingers and hope for the best yeah it does accelerate things a bit doesn't seem to be too bad. It's a little bit of rising going on here. Now, rising is when it makes those little blobs in there. So what you can do is, if it's not going to end up soap on a stick, you can actually stick blend it a bit more and see if you can smooth them out. There we go. I'll see you again with the cut and see how things ended up here. Okay, it's a little bit more than 24 hours later and we are ready for the cut. I'm just going to unmold it. It's quite firm to the touch. So it's set up actually quite very fast. Okay, what I can see here is I've got a partial gel. Um, the little darker spots will be the um, rising of the fragrance oil. And yeah, it's a little bit rustic because it nearly seized up on me. Oh, that lovely, lovely butterscotch that turned bad. So there are a few things to learn from this. One of it is if you are using a recipe that is already going to trace fast because the INS number were quite high, don't use new fragrance oil that you haven't tested before. Um, if you have fragrance oil that actually does move fast, then like me, just realized, you know, um, it's a very fast tracer, then the next time, um, don't throw it away. There are ways to use it. I just keep all my little shavings together. I will do a rebatching video at some stage for you guys. So I don't throw anything away. Best thing is to, if you keep your shavings together, is to keep all the light color, lightly colored ones in one container and the darker colored ones in another. Don't mix it like I do because this is going to end up in a very gray shape. Um, if you keep them separately, then your color control is much better there. So here, what 
what I would like to show you here, here is this little darker spots here is where the fragrance oil raised so I think when we cut it might have spots all over it eh? so let's see this is my DIY home cutter if you want to make one yourself I will leave the link and then you can just have a look at it this is actually very hard soap There's lighter color in the inside with darker color on the outside. Um, after two or three days of cure, it will most probably all turn the same color that what it is on the outside. There is some rising spot showing there. I've got a little air bubble in there because the batter was so suddenly extremely thick. well so there's a little bit less spots but there's still a few of them in there I think when I duck the stick blender in there, I actually blended some of the rice rising out of it. But when it started to go too thick, I had to stop. And I think these are the that came from the bottom side there. That um, I didn't really have the time to blend into the rest of the batter there. There we go. So. That is our kombucha soap. I can't just cut it and show it to you. We need to taste it as well. Now normally you should wait at least two days, 48 hours, before you taste your soap. Um, then all the lye will be already uh, neutralized. It's a nice creamy leather, although it makes some larger bubbles as well. So this feels nice and smooth and creamy on my hands. Um, normally in hot water, this is mixing in with my water now. With hot water, usually it makes a soap scum that's on the top of the water. And it just makes a mess. Um, we've got lots of calcium in our water here. So or lime scale and our pipes and geysers and everything just clogs up with the stuff terribly so if you work it a little bit it's becoming even more creamier yeah so this is a very nice lathering soap here yeah? I took it off autofocus and then when I started to lather this up uh, there wasn't it didn't focus on my hands there so yeah there we go we've got very nice foam here yeah? it's a lovely soap feels very nice it smells divine even though my fragrance oil messed things up a little bit at the end but that is kombucha soap for you so happy soaping until i see you guys next time again